Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to discuss some ways that can save you a ton of time and also allow for a lot of creativity within Cakewalk by BandLab. So stick around. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if this is the first time that you're here, nice to meet you. This channel exists to simplify the complexities of the home studio and to help you make professional sounding music in a less than professional space. Well, today's topic is all about patch points. Now I'm excited to talk about these in particular due to the fact that this is one of the many areas that Cakewalk by BandLab actually sets itself apart from other DAWs on the market. So first off, let's discuss what a patch point actually is. So essentially a patch point is an internal routing path used to route audio from a track output, bus output, or a send to an audio track input. The virtual inputs can then be input monitored or recorded. So you can think of patch points as virtual patch cables in a digital realm. Now, in keeping with Cakewalk's user-friendly ability to customize nearly everything under the sun, you can freely create, assign, and rename these patch points. This powerful internal routing tool opens up a completely new dimension of control within Cakewalk by BandLab. You can use patch points, for instance, for track-to-track, -track, bus to track and send-to-track routing, and to even record audio signals that otherwise could normally not be recorded to an audio track, such as a bus output a send effect, or even a metronome. Now, the wonderful thing about Cakewalk's intelligent system routing is that it actually automatically prevents assigning patch points that would otherwise cause feedback loops, which is a common problem in a real world setting when patching various pieces of analog gear together. Okay, moving over to the desktop now, let's look at some examples of how we can use patch points within our current workflow. Now, in this first example, we're gonna talk about using patch points in concert with aux tracks. To streamline the workflow for patch points, Cakewalk by BandLab supports aux tracks. Now, aux tracks are used to receive audio from other tracks, buses, or sends. Stereo buses are traditionally used for subgrouping and effect sends, but it is possible to use aux tracks for the same purpose. Now, aux tracks have the added advantage of being able to record the incoming audio, whether it be mono or stereo, and you can arrange aux tracks adjacent to other tracks in the track pane or in the console view. An aux track is a regular audio track that has been automatically assigned to a patch point input. If you rename the aux track, Cakewalk by BandLab will also rename the assigned patch point. By default, when you create a new aux track within Cakewalk by BandLab, it does the following automatically. For one, it will create a new patch point named aux blank, where blank is equal to a sequential number. It also assigns the source, whether it be a track, bus, or a send output to the new patch point and it creates a new audio track named aux blank, which is the same name as the patch point. Now, if you rename the aux track, Cakewalk by BandLab will automatically rename the corresponding patch point. It also enables input echo on the new audio track, and it assigns a default aux track icon, as seen here. Okay, now that this is all set up, you can now freely assign other tracks, buses, and sends to the aux patch point. It's also important to note that any audio track that has its input control assigned to a patch point is considered an aux track. Unless you manually assigned a custom track icon, any track that has its input control connected to a patch point will automatically display the default aux track icon. Now, for referential purposes, here is a signal flow chart to give you an idea of how the signal flow works with the patch point. All right, so there are actually a couple of different ways to create a new patch point. You can either click an audio track or bus output control and select new patch point from the pop-up menu as seen here. You can also right click in this area here just below the track icon to bring up the same set of sub menus. Or by working in the inspector view, you can go to sends from here and insert a patch point from here. Okay, let's begin by using this first guitar track as an example. So as you can see, I'm gonna to go to the output here on this and I'm going to go to new aux track. Just underneath the track, you can see that aux track two has been created. Now, when you create a new aux track, both sides of the connection are automatically made. However, when you create a new patch point, only one side of the connection is automatically made. The new patch point is assigned to the input, output, or send you use to create the patch point. You must manually assign the other end of the patch point to complete the connection. Let me demonstrate what I'm talking about. 
So if I right click in this area here and go to insert patch point, you'll now see that I have what looks like a send. However, this patch point is currently going nowhere because there's no end to the patch point. So in order to close the loop, so to speak, I would have to set one of these tracks input to the patch point. You'll notice too that from this same menu, I can actually rename the patch point from here. Now, much like anything else that's used within Cakewalk by BandLab, you can actually use quick grouping to clear multiple tracks, buses, or sends simultaneously. To do so, just simply select multiple tracks or buses and then hold down the control key while you clear the patch point assignment from any of the selected tracks or buses. Just for the sake of this tutorial, I'll show you how to put it on all of the tracks at once. By holding down the control key and pressing A, I'm now gonna select all of the tracks at once. Now with all of the tracks selected, I can hold down the control key again, right click in this area, go to insert, new patch point, and now every one of them have the same patch point already located on them. Likewise, if I wanted to delete all of those new patch points I just created, holding down the control button again, I can go in here to delete send and they're all now deleted. Okay, so in this example, let's say I'd like to record an audio track that contains effects on it. I can simply insert the plugin of my choice, which in this case is the Tremulator, set the output of this first track now to the aux 2. I'll now set the input of aux 2 to a mono signal, as that's what's being fed to it, and make sure that I've interleaved this into mono. Now, I simply arm the track for recording and record. Now, I can disarm the track and even take the Tremulator plugin off of the first track. Keep in mind that if the output of the first track is still set to aux 2, even if I solo this track, I'm going to hear what's going on in aux 2 as well. So I'm going to reset this to master. Now I can hear just the printed track with the effect. And the original track is left unfiltered. Alright, another creative way that you could use this is to actually record multiple tracks to a single track. So essentially, I could create a guitars track as I have here and literally blend all of the guitars together on this one track. And essentially, if I like the sound of it, delete three tracks for this one. So I'm going to set the output of one, two guitars, the output of two, two guitars, and the output of the guitar solo to guitars. So now that I have multiple sources coming to it, and some are blended left and some are blended right, I can go ahead and switch this back now to a stereo input. I'll interleave that stereo again. And now, just like we did in the first scenario, I'll simply hit record. Okay, now I've recorded tracks one and track three together on the same track. All right, another creative way that you can use these aux tracks and sends is to record just the send effects to an audio track. Let me show you what I mean. So if I right click on the audio track and select insert send, I can go to new stereo bus. All right, now that I have bus C created, I'm now going to insert the desired plugin, which in this case is the little plate on that new bus, which you can see here. I'm going to be sure to set the output of the plugins mix knob all the way to wet. Next, I'm going to make sure that the output of the bus is set to the aux track that we just created called guitars. Now I'm going to arm the guitars aux input and leave everything set as stereo. Now I just simply hit record. Okay, now I have a track that only has the audio effects from the reverb plugin on it. Okay, in this next example, we're going to talk about using the auxiliary tracks or patch points to record a metronome to an audio track. With the stereo bus that we've already got inserted, I've just renamed it metronome. Now I'm going to go to edit, preferences, project, and metronome. So from here, I'm going to click the output drop down menu and select the bus that I've just made named metronome. Then I'll hit apply. And now the output of the bus named metronome will be going to the aux track that I've just named metronome. Now with my newly created metronome track, I can send this off to a drummer or I can use this within Cakewalk and take advantage of the audio snap features to align other tracks to the same grid. All right, so I've started up a completely blank session, so this would be easy to follow along with. But another way that you can use these auxiliary and patch points creatively is to actually capture the performance of guitar effects in real time. Let me show you what I mean. 
The first thing we need to do is go to edit. Preferences. Then we need to find project and record. From here, you can see an option called multi-track grouping. Now, as of now, it says do not group tracks. I'm going to set this to group all clips and hit apply. Now I'm going to right click in this portion and insert an audio track. From this audio track that I've just inserted, I'm going to insert a send to a new auxiliary track. Now selecting both tracks by holding the control button, I'm going to set the output to a new auxiliary track. All right, now I'm going to continue by naming these something that would be applicable to the situation. Okay, so I've renamed them Guitar Live, which will be my DI source, the FX, which will be my effects, and a blend, which will literally be a blend of the DI and the effects source. So on the effects track, I'm gonna insert an instance of a reverb. In this case, I'll use the Eventide Reverb 2016. You'll notice that I've set the wet knob to 100%. All right, now with all of the tracks selected by holding the control key, I'm now gonna arm all of them for recording. All right, with my performance recorded, I can now select all of them again. And another quick way to select all of the tracks is to simply start with the first one, click and hold and drag down. Now holding the control button again, I'm going to disarm all of the tracks at once. All right, now let's take a listen back to the performance and see what we got. So let's take a listen to each individual track. Here is the live DI source. This is only the effects track. And this is a blend of the two. Okay, so some things to keep in mind when you're using these auxiliary tracks or these patch points, which if you haven't figured out by now are sort of interchangeable terms. To bounce or export a project containing patch points, you have to select all the tracks that contribute to the mix. For example, if the project contains three audio tracks like we have before us that send to an aux track, in this case, the blend, you must include the aux track as well as the contributing tracks prior to performing the bounce or the export. Another thing to make mention is that patch points and aux tracks have what's called a smart solo. So when you solo an aux track or bus that outputs to a patch point, Cakewalk by BandLab will automatically manage the solo state for all upstream and downstream tracks and or buses. This eliminates the need to manually solo or mute other tracks when using patch points. You can actually see and hear an example of this right here. I'm going to solo the guitar live track. Now because its output is already set to the other auxiliary tracks, the smart solo feature is going to allow you to hear those tracks even though they're not technically soloed. Take a listen. Now, conversely, soloing the blend track will also allow us to hear the FX track because, as has already been stated, soloing a track that has its input control assigned to a patch point will automatically make all upstream tracks and or buses audible. Now, along these same lines, it's important to note that all upstream or downstream tracks that are muted as a result of soloing an aux track are dimmed in the clip's pane to indicate that these tracks will not be heard. This makes it very easy to visually see the result of muting an aux track and tracks are not dimmed as a result of soloing buses. Now with all of these tracks being patched and routed in different areas, the question then arises: does this cause latency issues from track to track? However, built in under the hood, Cakewalk by BandLab has something called PDC, which is Plugin Delay Compensation. The PDC depends on the plugin itself to report back what its internal latency is, so that Cakewalk can slow everything else down to match it. Now, 99.9% .9 of the time, the schema works perfectly. It's one of the details that Cakewalk worked out a long time ago before most other DAWs actually did. 
However, once in a while, a plugin isn't accurate in its reported latency, and phase cancellations can actually happen from this. Sometimes external hardware can also be an issue because there's no mechanism for it to report the latency back to the DAW. There is a way actually to test the latency of a plugin by sending a sharp transient to it and zooming in on the waveform to make sure that the main and the parallel path actually line up. However, the only time that you're going to routinely run into latency problems is with plugins that feature minimum phase filters, meaning any equalizer or any effect that incorporates an equalizer. For that reason, you want to be careful applying EQ to parallel paths and avoid steep EQ boosts. Or another fix to that is actually to use linear phase equalizers. Now these issues do not normally apply to compressors, even if the compressor incorporates a sidechain filter. So to sum up the question of whether or not the aux tracks that you have just created are causing some sort of delay issues, your best bet would be to honestly just use your ears and if you can hear some kind of a delay or something happening, try to compensate that by changing your buffer sizes. All right guys, well I hope this brief overview of auxiliary tracks and patch points will prove useful and I also hope that you're already developing in your mind some way to use these creatively in your own workflow. If you found this video useful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and comment below if you have any creative ways that you've found to use these already that I have not covered. I always love seeing people share their knowledge on my channel and I always love showcasing things that they've learned as well. So until next time guys, remember, you can dream alone, you can create alone, but together we can achieve so much more.